Welcome to Crypto DM. I hope everyone's having a good day or good evening wherever you are. I'm back once again. Let me just thank you for liking the videos, subscribing, and sharing the vids, man. Thank you very much. Make sure you follow me on TikTok at Crypto DM. But let's get into it. So in this video, we're gonna have a look at um, some ISO 20022 information, mainly some statements made by uh, Quincy Jones, who's an XCC de developer real whiz kid and um just a couple other things but first let's have a look at the market so a, a bit of a correction right you know a bit of volatility coming up here in the last uh seven days or so but if you actually check it out and you're looking on the seven day market's recovered a little tiny bit it's really not that bad but listen at the end of the day there's gonna be volatility right um but i hope that you're beginning to see that at the, at the end of the day what what we're doing here is we're investing in the future okay and blockchain is the future blockchain is at the heart of this fourth industrial revolution and things are going to start moving faster and faster and there's going to be more adoption and more utility and that's going to drive the price of particular cryptos up and like i said don't be surprised if next year or in the next two years three years four years these values these market caps are way up and the, the coins which you see in the top 10 right now some of them ain't nowhere near the top 10 i mean right now look, look at the top 10 you got bitcoin i mean come on terrible technology ethereum is come on ethereum's behind the game right now okay bitcoin and ethereum don't be su surprised if they're not top two in the near future okay you got binance coin uh, for the Binance smart chain, I mean, come on, uh, Binance is a bit scammy anyway. Tether, <laughs> come on, the less said about Tether, the better, man. That's a, that's a scam. And all these stable coins for me, stable coins remind me of like mini discs. Remember, you had that little period, you know, CD, CDs were dominating after cassette, and then you had mini discs, but mini discs didn't seem to last long, did they? It's like MP3s came and just, you know, like people forgot about the mini discs. Well, pretty much i feel that's what these stable coins are like i think stable coins are pointless because we're moving on to a new system which is going to be dominated by cbdc's central bank digital currencies so i mean right now it works because fiat is still you know fiat is still doing its thing but what's going to happen to these stable coins even if they are backed by you know the way they say they are by these fiats what's going to happen to tether if the dollar starts hyperinflating like think about it you know how do you control that so stable coins for me they're a temporary thing you know they're not going to be here trading is going to be done with cbdc's in the future not stable coins that's my opinion but anyway solano great great tech um wef done uh, earmark them cardano Obviously, it's USD coin, another stable coin. Um, XRP, you don't know. <laughs> you already know where that's going. Uh, Polkadot, great tech, and so on and so forth. So if you're invested in good technologies that are uh, ready to be adopted into this new system that's being formed, then you should be good in the, on the long term. All right, These little short-term daily and monthly volatilities shouldn't really be an issue to you. You're going to win in the end. 100% this ain't financial advice but you know come on like we already know what the agenda is and what the trend is blockchain to the world yeah now this is your boy Quincy all right make sure you give him a follow if you're on Twitter he always coming out with good information right um your boy Quincy he's got a YouTube channel as well check that out um he's an XCD foundation developer building dApps for the future of automation blah 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 so the dude knows what he's saying man he's one of them proper techie dons yeah proper whiz kit he sees things most people can't see because he's got that technical brain right <sighs> so that being said what i want to do is show you a couple clips yeah which a lot of things he's saying is what i've been saying you know because you can see it you can see it man but it's when it's coming from him it's even better because he's on the inside of the game you know he's one of them tech whiz kids so let's let's listen to this this is the first clip right here 
you currently work and are a developer for? This is an interview he's done with um the bearable bull. Um, you can go to Coin Club Crypto and uh, watch these videos. He's got a playlist available where you can watch his interview with at bearable bull. Check it out. It's very informative. Okay, very, very informative. Uh, let's play this. For XBC, and I do want to get into your, your specific forte just a little bit. My question to you is, what do you think XDC's role is going to play in this new system? Because in my head, this is kind of how I imagine things. Just I see about to talk about XDC, which is one of our ISO two zero zero two two tokens. All right? Look at this XDC market cap. Come on, man. 671. Nah, come on. That can't be real. 671,000. That's a come on. Undervalued is an understatement. Okay, it's down 20% in the last seven days. Like, let's make sure this delays. Well, 17% now. It's gone up a little bit. Listen, man. This, for me, this is opportunity right here. All these ISO 20022 coins this is all opportunity man when these dips come in you know um algorand didn't really dip that much but all the others did xrp stella did iota that was some good opportunities man they were down like 20 25 percent goodness gracious <sighs> opportunity but anyway let's listen xrp is kind of digital gold stellar is the silver xdc is like copper and algo is palladium is that something that i can kind of does that kind of make sense or am i missing it a little bit i'd say don't look at it in terms of that because i think that misses a lot of uh i think that goes over a lot of important details of all the different technologies i think mm -hmm. the way you want to look at it is look at industry leaders in terms of capability so xrp may be a finance industry leader for liquidity sake xdc may be a maybe maybe a tech industry leader in terms of being able to share big data so i mean you may see something like uh you may end up seeing something like xlm being industry leader in terms of maybe not back end remittance like xrp but peer-to-peer -peer, uh payments for you know unbanked yeah. regions or whatever yeah. i think what's going to end up happening is each each network that's going to have some some stake in the future is going to have uh some value proposition for essentially an industry of some sort that's the simplest way to put it a value proposition for an industry and essentially rise to the occasion of its industry so you may have certain technologies that rise in the medical industry you have mm -hmm. certain technologies that rise in finance that rise in business that rise in tech and i think i think what's going to end up happening is it'll be more like that where you'll more have like these industry networks that are typically used on these these typically these industry that will be typically used on certain networks based on whatever features they be and the reason why I say this is because I think XRP will absolutely slaughter in terms of the financial markets because of its because of its capabilities. Um, but in terms of XDC, this is where this is where things get really interesting because I think people don't really look at this, but I think XDC may take over not only trade finance but big. It's almost like big data metadata around trade finance. So not only will not only it's sort of like getting into automatic uh, uh, programmatic trading among different types of assets, but also the 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 commodification of the data around those assets in the first place. So it's one of those things where like, if you're, let's, let's say you're wealth management, um, you know, let's say you're wealth management uh, advisor or something. And you're not only are you making trades in regards to being able to grow your portfolio, but you're also taking account of a lot of data and a lot of, you know, a lot of analytics. Well, I think mm -hmm. not only will uh, XCC take over trade finance in terms of being able to track those uh, trades, make those trades, be able to make programmatic, uh, programmatic like financial decisions, but also being able to keep track of all that data around that too, and be able to build applications within that. So, and that's thing, this is where the, the, con the commodification of data becomes so important because what if not only are you keeping track of the financials and programmatically and creating a series of, of creating a series of dApps to programmatically handle your portfolios, but you're also handling big data by being able to tokenize that data, share that data with whatever your peers may be, or being able to access other forms of data natively by being able to just simply pay for it. So let's say you're engaging with the market in some form of the world and there's a smart contract elsewhere that's engaging with another market and, and a series of other assets. You can essentially uh, communicate with that other smart contract and retrieve data before you even have an engagement with it uh, just to see if you want to potentially make that next step. And I think you'll see a lot of that with smart contracts. But I think that's going to be the biggest thing with uh, with uh, XDC because we just had our uh, partnership with uh, Trade Tech. And that's exactly what Trade Tech's doing. Trade Tech is they're not only tokenizing uh, different uh, financial assets that are uh, already 
native in the, uh, in the you know, in the native, uh, already native in the uh, financial space, like traditional assets, but it's also tokenizing the data around those assets. It's tokenizing the transactions. It's tokenizing the different relationships between the parties. And what that ends up doing is there's a, there's a, th these tokens end up becoming commodities in themselves because this is some information about something that somebody's willing to pay for to some, in some capacity. And what ends up happening is these end up garnering a lot and a lot, a lot. Think of big data in general. Imagine a token associated with every piece of data associated with the data. So you end up having trillions quadrillions of bytes of data constantly being shared and uh, and explored every day and uh, i think xcc is going to take that over in terms of uh, trade trade finance metadata um and tracking in terms of uh, analytics i think it's going to be key. crazy crazy so you're seeing that what he's ba basically telling you there is like well he's explaining a lot when it comes to xcc but when you're looking at the different um tokens the different iso 200 tokens and other um blockchains which you know are good technology they're all gonna find their place in different industries and certain tokens are just gonna be leaders for that one particular industry man which is good so there's there's, there's not just gonna be one blockchain that's gonna dominate them all but there won't be a, there won't be thousands all right there'll probably be like maybe 20 right and you already know the iso 20022 tokens are going to be right there top five and remember i told you all right now let me get this part because basically he's going to go into why the iso 20022 tokens are just on a different level all right listen to this at any given moment um something can be the catalyst where every government says all right now it's time to really get the pedal to the metal you know because we're in dangerous times <laughs> yeah um that's where that's where iso is really interesting because iso is a global effort and the united states is the last country at least one of the last major countries to get on board everybody else has gotten on board since 2017. so mm -hmm. it's one of those things where like we're going like oh yeah it's years away no we're the slow ones the rest of the world is already like on board with what we're saying it's years away you see yeah. like and and how much of that do you think is because of the fact that the U.S. does hold the reserve currency status? I think that's a big part of it. Yeah, I think I think there's actually a lot of politics in that because um, if, if you want, uh, this is kind of funny. If you want a little bit of, of my own speculation on, on some of this, that, that's kind of funny. <laughs> Let's do um, it. it <laughs> Yeah, I think I think so I, I think there's a lot of politics on the dollar being the reserve currency. And oh crap, I forgot what the I forgot what the uh, what the conundrum was called. And um, I'm in agreement with this. This is something which I've said. The end of the day, the United States is dragging their feet on this um, fourth industrial revolution because by bringing in this new system, it actually hurts America's ability to dominate the earth using this you know the swift system and the fed wire and the, U the united states dollar as the world reserve currency all right because now the technology exists through cryptocurrencies and blockchains for these other nations to basically work their way around the the dollar there's a new infrastructure being built which which can be used okay so in a way this new system kind of hurts America's hegemony, and that's why they're dragging their feet. But they go, they know that it's inevitable. The rest of the, the the world is is moving on. All right, so they're in a difficult place right now. Um, Triffin dilemma. Say that again. Yeah, the Triffin dilemma. There you go where uh, economic policy that's good for us isn't good for the rest of the world and economic policy that's good for the rest of the world isn't good for us. And yeah. uh, this is where obviously the, the argument for decentralized networks come into play because then you don't have that dilemma anymore. But see, here's the thing, the, the current crown for the, for the global reserve currency is the US dollar. So it's one of those things where it's like, just to move over into another, into another, any- It's interesting because let me just add this, you just seen today, um, America threatening them, uh, Russia again with sanctions and removing them from the SWIFT system. So this is more reason why these other nations, they want to move forward um, with these new, um, what should I say, these new infrastructures um, so that they can get around this kind of bullying, man. U.S. has too much power and too much leverage to where, like, I hate to say it like this, but uh, like, I may, I think you may end up seeing a almost like a crisis 
And mm-hmm. instead of solving the crisis, they may just default on the dollar and tell you tell everyone that holds bonds and U.S. dollars everywhere else in the world to go screw off. You're- right. Sorry. Okay. And then um, I want to play this part because he's gonna go into um, you know, ISO two zero zero two two again and adoption and um, just listen up. You have to say there needs to be this much minimum liquidity in order for people to use it. I think it's it's more than just liquidity because it's also performance features. Uh, interoperability um all there's so many different things that go into it too there's a lot of things to think about but liquidity is the number one thing in terms of like global adoption it's sort of like the functional it's the functional tool that's needed economically for the global adoption that everyone wants to take place and it also comes down to why you're not going to see a hundred different blockchain networks all be you know all be huge because there's not enough there's not enough value and, and wealth in the world to create enough liquidity for every network to win you see what i mean yes I do understand that, and and that's what that's why I'm personally a utility maximalist because I know that 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 specifically they're choosing their winners now. They're choosing the ones that are going to be here in the futures now. And exactly. And your ISO two zero zero two tokens are at the top of that pile. And the writing is on the wall, kind of for for quite a few of them. And I know you're personally fond of quite a few projects. Um, uh, I think you're you're very big on the ISO coins, correct? Is there a specific yeah. reason? Is there a specific reason why? I know there is, but I want you to go a little bit deeper to that. Yeah, it actually uh, it kind of starts off with me. So back at back when I worked at a private equity firm, uh, it, I actually just go into like a little story for why that is. But back when I worked at a private equity firm, um, we were working on a few projects, primarily in cloud. And then I was working, I tried to get them sort of in the blockchain a little bit, explaining like Ethereum, explaining XRP. And uh, they're like, oh, cool. Like it took me a couple months, maybe like four or five months. But I finally got them on board. And um, XRP was going to be the main thing I wanted to get them into. But at that time, uh, the lawsuit was coming out. And they were like, ooh, uh, this is, yeah, we don't want to take a liability. And the biggest thing I was like, well, was, well, crap. Like, what am I going to be able to do? So I was thinking in terms of like, corporate entity ish where i'm like okay what is a token or what are tokens that they're going to be willing to accept that are going to mm-hmm. be within the confines of whatever that they're going to be willing to accept and mm-hmm. when i told to them about xrp they told them that it was uh, that it was iso compliant they already knew what iso was you know this, this this is a financial firm. they already knew what it was so it was very easy for me to stick to them and say okay this is something you guys already work with this is something that these are compatible with these like they, they like they, and i think i had to also bring up like this is why i went into corda and xdc and uh and algorand was because it was something that they already worked with that I knew, and, that's, and this wasn't even just the only thing too, because that was the one reason why they didn't want to touch Ethereum or Bitcoin, because they knew that it wasn't within any compliance of anything that they already worked with. So it would kind of just be them kind of just shooting their shot and hoping on making more or accumulating more of those assets, when in reality, they're mostly focused on just trying to build out their business to be more efficient. So mm-hmm. they're not really focused on hunting an asset, they just want to make the business more efficient. They're fine to move within assets to do that. But um, so yeah, I'm like trying to explain to them, like, look, these are asset compliant, explain what I, like they already knew what it is, but I'm like explaining like how these operate on these networks and how these are only one of a few, like these are common on these networks. And one thing that I really noticed were, like just from my experience and sort of the private in the private life was uh they didn't really want to touch anything that wasn't anywhere near uh anything that can possibly be questioned as out of compliance with something that they're already doing they're not going to get anywhere near a 10 foot pole so if it's something that's already within the realm what that means is when you got the whole financial system that's already been gearing up to operate on the iso 20022 compliance standard right global standard they when if they were to adopt blockchain they're gonna go for blockchains which are compliant all right that's what he's basically trying to tell you let's keep going something that they're already doing and maybe there are some things that they don't want to do with xrp because of the lawsuit but they're perfectly fine with dealing with xdc and corda and even algorithm you see what i mean so it's very easy to get them on board and that's the thing i see this already already with a bunch of other with a bunch of other companies i, I see on a day-to-day basis now is that they want things to be as close to what they're already doing as possible with it, with, that, with it at the same time being better. So them just moving entirely from their art, that's part of the reason why I chose Corda too, because I was already able to operate within the framework of their current system and move them over onto uh, permission blockchain systems while without them changing too much of what they already had. Because it's a lot for them to just rip out everything they already had and then jump into Web3, you know, Ethereum, and then now everything that they've had before is pretty much worthless and they don't have any developers on this new stuff. So it, there needs yeah. to be a little bit of a mesh in between. So that was the main reason why I went into, uh, went into ISO so much was because it, it was just such a strong pull at the job I worked at before to get into something that was already pre that already had similar compliance compliances to what they were already dealing with and they were already familiar with it and all the different mm-hmm. and all the different standards for that and uh, even now when i just see more of it i'm just like it seems as if uh it, for one compliance is going to be a huge thing anyway and there really isn't anything clear on compliance and yes. iso is kind of the only thing and it's not perfectly clear but it's essentially a series of guidelines that banks globally use to be able to send message payment um message payment uh like you know receipts to each other 
And it's very simple. Like, it's not like a huge, huge thing. That's why I'm like, wow, like, like if you're not even on this, on this, and this is super simple and it's compliant with thousands of banks globally, then how are we supposed to get that adoption in which you're able to see that, you know, flow of uh, different entities operating on that network? If they can't even be adopted, if they can't already be compliant in the needs that they already are. You see what I mean? That makes a lot it's of like sense. It's like they've got to fix a problem that they never had before. It's like, we're not, it's like we're compliant now. You can move over to this network that's not compliant. And then we need to fix that when, in their mind, they're like, why would I do that if it already works now? Why would I make it harder for myself? To, you see what I mean? That's 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 what's most important. So yeah, check this out, man. In fact, I'm gonna put the link to his playlist, like, cause he goes into a lot of different things, man. So a lot of good food for thought. But he's saying a lot of things that I completely agree with when it comes to the ISO two zero zero two two. Listen, if you don't know nothing about crypto, <laughs> don't be. This is not financial advice, but don't be like getting into meme coins and crap like that, man. Unless you got money to throw away, put your money where it matters. Put your money, um, and and bet on the trends, man, that you can see happening. You know what I mean? Now, he had a good. He had this um post he did afterwards, which kind of breaks down what he was just saying. Okay. ISO two zero zero two two. The standard is not what's surprising. What's surprising is that there is a growing adopted global standard and people think that non-compliant technologies i.e ethereum and bitcoin will be used you want adoption well it looks like you need to fit the message standards needed okay simple as that this is why i say that these um tokens that look at look look xrp is eighth algorand is 18th stellar's 26 iota is 53 and XDC is 122. Trust me when I say these are going to be top five tokens. Top five, top 10, definitely. Market caps are going to be crazy. All this, once the adoption starts, all this money that's uh, in Bitcoin and in all these Ethereum projects and all that, it's going to all start flowing into these tokens. All right. All the coins that are useless they're gonna disappear there's no need for them don't you know simple as that all right yeah they're not <clears throat> another this, yeah, he's got some good tweets here adoption isn't just accepting crypto payments for your application it's the future applications themselves residing on these networks trading and commodifying data and interconnecting with other users and application this creates a native digital economy for the internet of value boom and that's what's coming that's what's coming man and it's gonna come fast there is this notion crypto will replace fiat it won't fiat will fiat will run on these crypto networks as payment means and by fiat he's talking about cbdc's fiat is a medium of exchange for traditional markets crypto is a medium of exchange for the execution of decentralized systems so you this is why you're gonna people thinking cryptocurrencies are gonna replace fiat no cbdc's right which is a new form of fiat is going to re replace cash and then it's going to work and interoperate with these blockchain systems all right that's why you got the the iso 20022 family all right um let's cover this real quick okay iota cop 26 um at mary dlrw talked about the role of dig IT and DMRV in climate action and sustainability. So again, the Anatba following the following the trends, following the agenda, keeping up with the climate action. Right? And you know you got Algorand, you got Planet Watch. Listen, these blockchains are doing what they got to do. They fit right into the agenda. Right? They fit, remember Anatba, um the family, those core group of um cryptocurrencies founded the interledger protocol okay this this thing's all set up man and it's ready to it's ready to to go live all right so don't worry about what happened in the last hour 24 hours seven days yeah make sure that your position this ain't financial advice but make sure you have a position in the new system that's about to be brought online the new system the fourth industrial revolution make sure you own a piece of it all right don't worry about certain of these coins that you see doing well right now 
Yeah, because Bitcoin, Ethereum. Don't worry about that. Trust in what you see happening. Trust in what you see happening. Trust. Yeah? The system has already chosen the winners. It's just that the average person doesn't know yet. Most people in crypto do not know yet. Because they're not paying attention. Yeah? They're caught up on, on false ideologies and hype trains. And not seeing the agenda. Not seeing the technology. How can XDC be this price? It's just madness. How can these talk how come people are not piling into these tokens, but they're piling into Shibu Inu and Ethereum? Ethereum is horrible to use, man. It's expensive. And you were talking about layer two, what ETH2. Why do you need ETH2 for? Like why? When you already have blockchains that are getting the job done now, it's just not efficient. Bitcoin Lightning Network. Why do you need that for? It's a waste of time. How can you not see this? Okay. Like I said, take a good look at the market as it is now. It's not always going to be like this, man. This top 10 is not always going to be like this. Just like if you go back 10 years ago, the top... Uh, oh, oh, well, not, well, not exactly 10 years ago, but you go back far enough, the top 10 was a lot different. I can show you that the top 10 was a lot different than what it is now and it's going to be a lot different in the future and so in these coins that you see here now it might not be there all right position yourself so with that you know hopefully this video spurs you to, to you know to research and really have a look at what's going on with these iso 20022 tokens man but you know do your own research make your own decisions man don't forget to like the video subscribe and share you know, um, have a good day or a good evening wherever you are. It's been Crypto Per Diem. I'm out.